You're listening to To Hatch a Pod with Key Budge, Corey Costello, and Greg Garrett. Welcome to To Hatch a Pod. I'm Key Budge. With me today, Corey Costello, our Economic Development Coordinator, Greg Garrett, our City Manager. Today, guys, we've got a conversation. We're going to invite in a special guest that uh, represents a statewide agency that has an impact here locally from Caltrans. That's right. Christine Nadler. I can't wait to talk to Christine and very important role in our highways and byways. You know, the city has owned streets and roads, but Caltrans has a big, big influence, Highway 58 and 202. And then we have the county roads too. Maybe we can invite the county at some point too. But today we're going to talk to Christine. We're really excited about that. And we talked about, I think when we teased this show about, oh yeah, it might be good timing because of weather. And go figure, the timing was actually perfect after a pretty big snow event and some closures and reopenings and closures and reopenings. So it's good to kind of talk about that process and how that works and how they get that information out to the public who obviously now everybody wants that information you know, right away with that roads closed or not. So it's about real time. Yeah. So let's welcome in Christine Nadler. You are with Caltrans. You are the public information officer chief for district nine, district nine. For those that are listening, that is our region in Tehachapi. Caltrans is divided up into a ton of districts and you have one of the largest physical areas to cover. Welcome to Tehachapod. We do. We do have a very large area. And and, uh, thank you, gentlemen, for having me. I appreciate this because it's important for us to have just some input and voice and let everybody know what's happening on a statewide level with the state highway system. Well, a lot of people don't understand that the the role that Caltrans may play in our highways and byways. And why don't you start with telling us the boundaries of your district, quite large, right? And then we can start talking about um, what, what you do. You, you design, you build, you maintain, and just a big, big job. Yes. Yeah, so Caltrans District 9 encompasses Eastern Kern County, Inyo, and Mono counties. So you can, you can imagine we actually start in at Avenue A in Rosamond, and we go all the way north to the Nevada State Line at 395 in Topaz Lake. So we do have a very large area. We have a really wonderful large maintenance crew and, you know, our engineers and our designers are constantly looking at the roadways to better these highways for, for all travelers. What about, a, talk about a challenge in terms of just your different dynamics of all that. You're, you're talking about very rural mountain roads and highways that are at elevation. You're talking about stuff down in the desert, in the valley, and then in what we have in Tehachapi. So there's quite a few challenges just to have that sort of diversity of roads in, in a district this large. Definitely. We go from the lowest um, point in the, I guess, in the nation at Badwater all the way up to Mount Whitney, which is the mm-hmm. highest mountain. So <laughs> We do have a lot of climate condition, different climate conditions, different environmental conditions to deal with. That's kind of why we have our maintenance yards scattered all throughout the district, and they begin they specialize in those areas. And in your area, we have our Tehachapi maintenance station, and they they're the the main ones that yard and Mojave kind of cover that your area. And so that that covers Highway 202, which goes from the intersection of 58 all the way to the terminus of CCI, California Correctional Institute. And then mm-hmm. Highway 58 down to the west is in the Caliente area where you you hand off for District 7, which is headquartered in Fresno. So from Caliente all the way up the hill through the Tehachapi Valley and then down into the Mojave Desert, which is where I suppose the Mojave Maintenance Yard would then take over. And they share resources too, right? Of course. Oh, yes, definitely. Our crews work together all the time, especially in emergency situations. Right. And yeah. so with the snow that we've been experiencing this week that we're recording, actually, we've had a lot of snow and we expect more snow uh, in the coming days. And, and it's winter and we're happy to have it, really. And you're in your district, District 9, snowing everywhere at this point, <laughs> probably today as this records. But can you talk to us about how you prioritize and how you maintain and you work with the California Highway Patrol, the county roads, the city of Tatchby? We have really been working together collaboratively uh, in the last several months, really understanding each other better and so that we can assist each other in opening and closing and maintaining and making sure that the highways and byways are safe for the traveling public. Yes, the communication uh, between City of Tehachapi, 
all the cities in our in our district, but specifically your city, and then the CHP and our maintenance crews has really increased, I would say, over the last couple of years. There's a, a chain of notification, and I think it might be best if I just begin by explaining that, how this happens, because our maintenance crews are continually patrolling the state highway system in their area, in their areas, and then CHP is always out there. And how we find out about, say we have um, a traffic incident, if CHP is on scene and they decide they can handle the situation, then they don't contact Caltrans. If there's an issue on the roadway and they and CHP is on scene and they realize they need some traffic management, they'll give us a call or they need tow or they you know whatever they need, they'll go ahead and give Caltrans a call. So we work really closely and also working really closely is the dispatches between the two agencies. So CHP would call their dispatch, who would call our dispatch, and then our dispatch gets really busy trying to call out our crews, uh, report up to headquarters, notify PIO, notify, and they update the quick map. I'll, I'll talk about the quick map app a little bit later. So these calls can come in from the public. They can come in various ways. And CHP is usually the one who decides, you know, what agencies need to be involved when they're on the scene. The parameters for us from PIO, which I think is pretty interesting to most people when we decide, when we're allowed to kind of report, because things can be cleared up pretty quickly on state highway systems if there's local tow trucks really close at hand, or if it's off the roadway and not creating traffic impacts. So our parameters are if this if the incident is expected to last more than 30 minutes, if it's blocking one full direction of traffic. So say on State Route 58, if we've got all eastbound blocked on State Route 58, and there's traffic impact, there's a, a queue building up, and we have been notified, properly notified of all of this, then we can go ahead and report on what's happening. And the different methods that we do our reporting start with a press release, typically. So we get that out to, if it's something really big, we get a press release out to all the local city, state, and county stakeholders. This can include um, if it's gonna impact ambulance companies, schools, we have a really vast email list that we send to so that anybody that's emergency that's using these roads, that they're receiving these press releases to let them know about what's happening on the, on the state highway system. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. So we do, we're at Caltrans District 9 on both Facebook and Twitter. And um, I wanna thank Key for uh, recognizing and pushing out a lot of the incidents that occur in that area. I know that many of you receive your information from us through Key, and that's a really important partnership. And we really rely on everybody to continually push that and share that information out when something is happening on the state highway system. I definitely wanna push across right now, if any of our listeners are on Twitter, and you follow us, we also want you to follow Caltrans District 9. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's an important thing, whether it's on Facebook, on Twitter, or both, because the information you'll put out, and then you'll tag us, so that way I'll see it. So there's always a delay in that, and sometimes it's, it's pretty instant, but there's usually 15, 30 minutes before I'll catch a notification, and then I can relay it. So if you want to get that information even quicker, it's for both designations, Facebook and Twitter, it's at Caltrans9. Those are your handles. So if you yeah. type those in, you can follow District 9 directly and get the information as soon as you put it out. So what would be the quickest way, Christine? I'm just kind of curious with all these different channels, uh, apps, what is sort of the quickest, most instantaneous way for people to get that closure, reopening, you know, press release alert, you know, to them? Is it the app? Is it social media? So the app is real time and basically the app will have closures as soon as dispatch gets them, they send it to headquarters and the quick map app is updated. Other notifications are happening at the time. We're still deciding what crews are going to go out there, how long this is going to take. If, it, if we think it's going to take long enough to do the extensive reporting on it, then we start that. So social media can have, like Key was talking about, a little bit of a delay yeah. um, just because we're waiting to hear from everybody else what's happening and make that you know, decision on, are we pushing this out? With such a large, dis large district, we have a lot of things happening. I would say Quick Map, and I guess this is a good time to talk about Quick Map. It is a website, quickmap.dot.ca.gov, or it's a mobile app, and you can just find it in your uh, in your store on your mobile app. 
what it has is a lot of different options. So when you when you download this um, this app or this website, when you go into the website, you want to make sure that you choose the options that you want to see. We have everything on there from traffic cameras, electronic messaging signs, ways layers of delays in traffic. They we have those layers on there. We have CHP incidents. So you can you can click on a, a C, one of the CHP incident triangles and it'll pull up the whole CAD, what has been happening minute by minute. So quick map really is the most effective way to get information immediately. Say you had a tow truck area in or a tow truck in the area and there was an accident on State Route 58 and it was cleared up pretty quickly. That might not make the press release, but it will definitely make quick map. So the quick map yes. app is amazing. I have to say, I use it. You know, when in Tehachapi, we'll go down the hill to Bakersfield or the Antelope Valley. And what I'm doing now is I, I will open the app and just look at the traffic map because it'll show you, you know, some red lines, the, the traffic has stopped or, you know, it's slowing in different areas. So I can project the time that I may need to get from Tehachapi to wherever I'm going. So, and then also... It talks because, you know, if you put out a press release, it says 58 is closed from Towerline Road to, let's say, Cash Creek, right? Well, that's mm-hmm. a super broad, long area. But in the quick maps, it actually will show you the overpasses, the in the ingress and egress, the points of entrance, right? Tucker Road, Mill Street, the Summit, different places in Tehachapi. Because people will call City Hall. You know, I, I sit right close to the front desk, and people are calling City Hall all the time. And the girls answer, well, is the Mill Street uh, open? You know, the overpass, is it open? Well, no, it's closed, but the press release didn't say that because you just can't capture all of that. I really am promoting the Quick Map app. It is an amazing tool that really will help you in your travels. Well, I know that one of the things that also it talks about s- snow conditions and chain mm-hmm. controls. So mm-hmm. I know, especially in your area, as you get up and uh, up on 395, that's a big deal. But for here, it happens when like the incident that we had yesterday Mm -hmm. oh my gosh i mean we talk about snow and people throughout the not just in the city but our surrounding communities they look to us to get information about what's going on so i know christina and i were texting back and forth like crazy in the morning and her team was getting information to me and and you know hey we're about to put this out so we were trying to get the real time so not only did you have to deal with us here in eastern (laughs) kern but i know you, you had your own snow conditions going on you know, in, in the Mammoth area and, and further north getting up to the Nevada state line. So your team can all of a sudden with a weather incident get overwhelmed very quickly. Definitely. Definitely. It's, you know, as we mentioned before, there's many climates here and right now we have 395 closed, you know, that's another major corridor, just like state route 58 is a major corridor for us. The, you know, you're our major, I would say 58 and 395 would be our secondary and it's just amazing what happens when they close down. And well, it takes a lot to close them down. Yeah, for sure. We appreciate the 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 push to keep them open, but sometimes, you know, you just have to close it. You know, a truck jack knives or, you know, those sorts of things. You know, we had the perfect storm. I five is closed, fifty right. eight is closed, fifty eight opens, you have double, triple, quadruple the traffic. And then yesterday, a hay truck went went down, right. you know, down by Caliente yeah. or whatever. And the traffic was backed up forever. Nothing to do with mm-hmm. the weather. It was right. just, you know, one of those things. And you have to consider too. I mean, there's a term. There's a term in in racing when when a you know driver makes a mistake and they say he runs, you know, he wrecks. It's because he ran out of talent. And <laughs> let's be honest, when it comes to a lot of the road closures. I mean, a lot of us feel like, hey, I can drive on that. We probably can. We're probably equipped properly. There's plenty of drivers, and when the snow comes out, mm-hmm. they run out of talent. Mm-hmm. And when there's, I mean, Christine, when there's a couple, three accidents, it's like, okay, we got to, then the CHP's inundated, and then it's like, okay, we got to close this because obviously this is creating a problem. Right. Yeah, ultimately, yeah. it's about public safety. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Completely. That's that's our primary focus is on safety and how we can keep everybody safe. We kept getting, uh, our, the PIO team kept getting Facebook posts about, hey, we're sitting out here on on 14, there's no snow, there's nothing happening, yet you still have 58 closed. And they had no idea what was going on in the past. <laughs> so, right. you know, it's it's difficult because people get impatient. People don't want to wait. But then, you know, the speed is often a factor in these incidents. People spin out because they're going too fast or you they know, ran trucks out of overturn. Mm-hmm. There, <laughs> you also have, there's the 1-800-GAS-ROAD 
phone number. Yes. Now, does that yes. populate in real time out of from headquarters, just like the Quick Map, or where does that play in? Because I know I've used that for years and years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I had somebody comment recently that that's an outdated mnemonic with the you know now that we're trying to go to electronic vehicles and we're pushing all all this throughout the state. But it's just the corresponding numbers on the telephone, <laughs> so, and it's an, it's an older thing. What you see when you go when you go to one eight hundred Gas Road or four two seven seven six two three, well, you'll call, you can call that, or you can also see it on our website, and um, you can just and you'll be entering the the state route number, and it will give you the information uh, on that state route. So it's 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 helpful. It's not as specific and um, detailed as quick map does it get updated as at the same time that oh i'm sorry quick, does it, yes, with it does. quick map okay so it's it's pretty close to real-time information just a little bit it's older technology and for guys like me sometimes that are still embrace what i've got in my my rolodex see i even <laughs> dated myself with rolodex but you go back in and uh, it's like 1-800 gas road it's automatically programmed in my head if i've got a traffic problem that's where i well when i'm driving i have a bluetooth and it'll it'll listen to me and i say hey call caltrans 1-800 gas roads and then i can prompt it through so i don't have to look at my phone right being mm-hmm. safe so it's it's a tool that can be used effectively and you know what greg that's a really important point when you open the quick map app it says if you're operating a vehicle please close the app we don't mm-hmm. want you operating this while you're driving so if you you know it's it's the it's best to look at it prior to getting on the road and if you're encountering something on the road pull off to the side you know exit off the the highway and and take a look at what the conditions are don't try and look at it while you're on the road I was noticing the other day, Christine, in some of the closures that there was this ongoing problem of people that were skipping signs on on ramps and then getting on the road anyway, and then having to pull over and sit on the side of the freeway. You know, and that kind of speaks to this the preparedness of all this. And really, you should use the app or whatever in advance before you make that trip. Do you really need to make that trip? Is it absolutely essential? You have to go in in a weather condition, but. I mean, just simple like adherence to signs. You know, I think it was a great step. Actually, Caltrans started closing Highway 58 at Tucker and Tehachapi Boulevard at the light. So you couldn't make that left or right hand turn to head towards the on-ramp. Now, did that stop people? No, they went around it, but then got to the on-ramp and saw that it was, you know, it was closed anyway. So I think there's also that really simple just adhere to the signs as well so you don't put yourself in a further complication and then make it even more complicated for the CHP to be able to actually work and open the road. Right, exactly. That's a really good point. Um, and it also talks to being prepared. We have a really good website on the Caltrans. If you look up winter driving tips, it has all of the different things that you should have in your car because sometimes, you know, in blizzard conditions, you could be stuck in your car for hours. And not having food, water, medic, extra medication, um, sometimes like an extra shovel, kitty litter. You know, if you're traveling in winter passes, you really need to be ready with clothing. There's a, try and keep a full tank of gas. There's so many things that we can do. And if you check out those uh, or that web, that part of our website with the uh, winter driving tips, that can be really helpful. One of the things at the city of Tatchby we've been stressing last several years is emergency preparedness at your home, right? If you're not prepared at home, then you can't really help out if a neighbor or so, you know, it just goes on and on, right? But the different, I think about the difference between Bishop and Mammoth or Mojave and Tehachapi, right? It can be sunny in Mojave and Bishop, and it can be snowing in Tehachapi or Mammoth, right? And if we, in Tehachapi, we have so many commuters, that go down the hill. 65% of us, 60%, yeah. 60% of us leave every day. And if you're not watching your phone, right, you shouldn't be watching your phone at work, right? You should be working. If you're in Mojave or Edwards or, you know, down in, in Bakersfield, if you do encounter weather on your way home, then you can be prepared, right? Just be patient, have a blanket, water, a snack, whatever, and just know that You know, your government is working for you, whether it's the city, the county, Caltrans. If the road's closed, it's closed for good reason, right? We're doing everything we can to get it open because we understand the value of commerce, the safety. We don't want anybody stuck on the road, right? So it's it's really important to be prepared. We have lots of climates. You know, you can see another climate from here, quite frankly. (laughs) It's, 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 it's quite weird, but, but it's, it's what makes this area so special too, right? And within an hour with our, with our climates, there's a change in yeah. the road conditions. I mean, yeah. 
within that hour, when, when I used to work in the Antelope Valley, my wife would call me and say, hey, it's starting to snow. I had an hour to get home, and I knew I had probably an hour, hour and a half, depending on you know how strong the storm was, whether or not 58 would be closed or access to my community would be mm-hmm. closed. And it was one of those, you know, we had our little phone tree set up. Hey, all right, snowflakes are falling. Tatchby is the yeah. land of four seasons. All in one day sometimes. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I prepared. I mean, I have a little, uh, my wife's car, my car, we both have a small backpack that's got a couple um, fairly large bottles of water. And then I think I got a couple old, you know, not old, but they're military MREs. And they're in there. So, you know, should you have, in a blanket, should you have that night or whatever get caught going? We don't go to Bakersfield as much anymore, but when we were commuting, that was that was a big part of it, and we continue to update those bags. So it's always in the, the car. Uh, so should we be in Bakersfield or, or, or Lancaster or something and, and have a weather event um, We or whatever it could be? It could be a mudslide. We've had that happen before. Mm-hmm. Uh, they close Highway 58. Uh, so oh, yeah. just to have that preparation so in case you are stuck uh, and even worst case stuck on the road, you are not. You know, left without. So if you're in a mudslide, what do you have? What do you take? You, you <laughs> like a rain jacket? I mean, I don't even know. I had actually some running shoes so you can run were, quickly yeah, away from well, it. Well, no, yeah. you couldn't get out of it. And, and obviously, we're talking about the mudslide down at yeah, the, at the uh, Sand Canyon, or the Cameron so, Canyon yeah. area. And some friends of mine were actually in the, you know, in their car, and it happened. And my goodness, you just can't be prepared for everything. But but no, just just keep your wits about you, yeah. right? And drive safe. Just mm-hmm. drive safe. Be safe. Be a considerate driver. Yeah. Well, we were always taught defensive driving. Yeah. And we've, that's, I know it's still preached, but it's not always practiced. Yeah, that's right. And it's just the defensive mindset of thinking about, you know, road conditions, you know, with, and think about 58, the amount of commercial traffic that's on there. Do we get some oil? Do we get some tire debris? Do we get these different things that fall off of trucks? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Don't forget the first time it rains, it's very slippery, yeah. right? And people, they never have figured that out. I can't, <laughs> I, I don't understand. Just drive a little slower. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do a quick little plug for my work crews when they're out there on the roads because yeah. being work zone alert for all of our uh, first responders and our crews out there is really important. Really, we need to move over, slow down, do whatever we can to kind of mitigate any dangers to them when they're, you know, when they're working on the sides of the road. And and that brings up a point because every year Caltrans has a ceremony to honor those that have fallen, you know, while working. Mm-hmm. You know, these are people that go to work. This is our neighbors. We live right next to these these folks that are out there working in dangerous conditions and we make the conditions worse if we're not paying attention or not slowing down. So I know it's it's something that's uh, that's important to, to Caltrans to get out, but I mean, our public works teams, they're working maybe not on, on the highway at 65 miles an hour, but they're working on our road conditions mm-hmm. here that vary from 25 to maybe 50 miles an hour mm-hmm. speed limits. So we want you to respect that construction cone zone and uh, really think about the people that are out there. Right prior to COVID, I was invited up to Bishop for a memorial about, what is it, two years ago now? Christine and spoke at the memorial and it's 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 really heavy you know you think about somebody that lost their life somebody's you know aunt uncle brother sister whatever that's just horrific you cannot imagine that and actually there's a state law is there not that says you must you must Mm -hmm. pull over either to the right or to the left depending on the emergency vehicle and or you know the maintenance that's going on so we want to remind everybody maybe you can elaborate on that a little Christine. Yeah, there's a move over law that you, if there's a lane available, you need to move over, slow down. I have seen way too many incidents. We we have our safety team at headquarters sends out these close calls that we have where, and there are photos and descriptions of incidents on the state highway system in all the districts. And they, they just get circulated around so that we can continually remind ourselves of, you know, being aware of what's happening while our crews are working on the roadways. We have people driving, literally driving into the, the construction lane and, you know, choosing to drive that way. A lot of it is distracted driving. A mm-hmm. lot of it is texting. Somebody's texting. We as adults need to be really good role models to our kids, to um, other people, and just put those phones down. Don't text. That's usually why people, you know, there's just distractions happening. And we really need to treat driving, you know, as it's an honor to drive. We, it's not something that we should always have, but we do. And um, 
we have other people's lives in our hands and it, it can be very scary for our crews out there. I spoke with Jessica in Tehachapi in our Tehachapi crew and she told me one time she was working on the side of the road near the fog line and she had a, a big rig drive by her. And we have, you know, our, our construction hats that we have, our little hard hats, they crank down onto our heads. And she always has hers fully cranked down. And the truck clipped her heel and her hat flew off. And that just really scared her. And, you know, it's, it's just, we, we need to pay attention. We need to recognize that these are, these are fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, you know, aunts, uncles, grandparents that are out on the roadway that have families that love them. And so we really need to honor that and, and just really pay attention. When you see equipment and you guys have vehicles that have this absorbing cushioning or something that's that's attached to the back that you, you see that, that, that always gets put at the tail end or the beginning of when you're entering a construction zone, when you have to design something like that, <laughs> it shows that we have, like you said, Corey, drivers that ran out of talent. Yeah. And they stop paying attention. Where we have to design safety equipment that is, it's almost mind numbing to think, why did we have to design that? Well, right. there was a reason. Right. You know, because yeah. there was someone that ran out of talent and didn't pay attention and didn't respect those, you know, that were outside of their car. So. And we have those attenuators on the roads all the time, but we can't have them with every crew. There's right. just not enough of them. So, that's when you see, I mean, they're, they're wonderful for, you know, taking an impact for the driver as well. But as we deal with these winter conditions too, um, remember, don't crowd the plow. That's another one of our Caltrans sayings. You know, you need to stay back from the plow. You can do serious damage to your car and cause great injury to yourself. The plow is not going to get hurt, but you may. Mm. So mm. you really need to give that plow lots of room in these uh, snowy conditions when you're, mm. when and then, you're near them. And we're also seeing a lot more now CHP involved with these construction sites, you yeah. know, to provide security. And mm -hmm. I'm sure they're there for this, this driver that's way out of control. that drives right through your zone that he can be there to, to uh, be on scene, but that's done out of a, a need. You know, it's, it's not just, wow, we just assigned CHP to it. There's a need because mm -hmm. of the distracted nature of our driving habits. They're there, they're there for speeders too. And actually I can tell you, I think it was about two years ago, I was talking to one of my construction resident engineers and he told me that CHP had told him that during a six hour window, and I believe it was on state route 58, he ticketed and or counted like he couldn't catch them all, like eight people going through the construction zone at over a hundred miles per hour. Good Lord. Hmm. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't do that on a regular drive, right? No, very few people go over hundred miles an hour ever, yeah. uh, let alone through a construction. That that's, that's insane. You, you brought up, I want to touch on something real quick because I think this is an important piece when it comes to safe driving in the wintertime. You, you'd mentioned the term, the fog line, and I'm shocked how many people, a lot of them, even adults, when I use the term fog line, they go, the what? And I said, the white line on the side of the highway or the road. And they're just, they, they just looked at me. It's, I said, follow the fog line. If you're in a, get stuck in a bad fog situation, you slow down, you, you, that's your guiding light is that fog line. I mean, you can, you can see it, uh, even low visibility snow conditions. If you're stuck on a kind of a free, I've, I've used it in the rain. If you get that really bad rain, you're having trouble seeing through your windshield. So that's an important thing to remember. I mean, that, that fog line is there is kind of a lifeline, uh, it's not just to show you that the, that's the end of the lane. I mean, that, that, that thing has a, a lot of value if you get stuck in a really bad weather predicament. Corey, that's, I'm glad you brought that up too, because use it also if you have oncoming headlights and mm. you can't, you know, you can't see and somebody's got their brights on you. The thing you should be focusing on is that fog line on the right side and just follow that. Yeah. If you, if, if you have somebody bright, you know, you don't want to flash your brights at them and cause another problem. You just want to mm. Think the best of them that maybe they just forgot they left it on and and take care of yourself and, and follow that fog line. To kind of shift gears out of uh, our winter driving, projects that we've got in the area, we've got a project that's that's along the 14 freeway that affects some of our commuters. Can you talk about that at all, about the what we expect the duration of that project to last? We call that the Rosamond Mojave Rehabilitation Project. And that is um, basically from Don Road to Silver Queen. It's a, an eight mile span. Many of you that drive that highway all the time know how rough that is. And we continually, our traffic operations department continually 
monitors pavement conditions throughout the district to see what we might need to to do some work on. And that came way up to the top of our priority list. So we are now in the beginning stages of working on this Rosamond uh, Mojave rehabilitation, where we're going to be changing out slabs, full slabs, and really bringing that up to a new, a new roadway that'll last us another 40 years with maintenance, you know, taking care of it after they're it's, it's in place. But the big thing to recognize through this area is that we're going to be closing one full side at a time to do the project. So recently we've been kind of buffing up the shoulders on the northbound 14 there through the project so that it can take the additional traffic. And soon in February, early February, we're going to be putting K-Rail down and we're going to divide the northbound side for one lane north and one lane south. And that's how that's going to be set up. And so there'll be reduced speed limits through there. Believe me, CHP is going to be keeping an eye on that. So everybody, please, you know, make sure you slow down through that zone. It's an area where I know a lot of people speed because it feels like you're out in the middle of nowhere. So just be really aware of that. This is a two-year construction project. It's expected to last two years. And so a necessary evil, I'll say, even though I, I do appreciate, I, I use that kind of in, in, in not a good way, but, but you know, I, I'm reflecting back to the Sand Canyon bridge replacement. You know, people were getting very tired and it took so long. It seems like it takes forever, but it does because you just can't build, you cannot remove a bridge and then build a bridge overnight. And so a project like this, it's going to take some time, but if you plan your day, use the apps, understand what's going on. Now, when I-5 is closed, everyone's going to go to 14, one lane through 58, you know, let's be honest, but it's going to, it's going to hurt a little bit, but you know, you, it has to be done. There is no way around it. Right. And you're working, you, you, you try to work with the contractor to figure out the most efficient way to, you know, to invest the taxpayer dollars and get the roads and byways, you know, open and, and improved and, you know, whether it's, you know, improving slabs or widening lanes. Right, exactly. It, you know, and first and foremost is, you know, the safety of the traveling public. So that's, that's what we're always thinking about when we design and build these projects. And there's not One, money forever. I mean, you know, we talk about uh, different areas in Tehachapi, you know, we, we really would like and need climbing lanes coming up from Bakersfield to Tehachapi. I know uh, council member mayor now, Phil Smith, has been working on that. We're working with Kern Cog, which is regional planning, Caltrans District 9 staff. But it takes a lot of time and a lot of money. And that's not just bureaucracy. That's, you know, you have to look at the environment. You have to look at the cost of everything. You know, you just can't plow a, a road, uh, add a new lane. There, there, it's a cliff. Right. And it takes years right. and years to to really, unfortunately, get through that. But it's legitimate. And then you look at Highway 202 in Tehachapi, you know, in the city of Tehachapi, it's four lanes. But when you start going out towards Golden Hills and Bear Valley, it becomes a two lane highway. Now Tehachapi has grown a lot over the last decade or two. And mm-hmm. is it is it full of cars? Yeah, it is. But you can't just go widen it day after tomorrow, right? There are right-of-way acquisitions, there are designs, all kinds of things. But rest assured, the city of Tehachapi, the county of Kern, Caltrans, we're all working together trying to figure out the best way to move forward so that everybody wins. I was just going to say that uh, there's a project coming up really soon. I think it's mid-February, to mid to late February, that we're going to be installing three CCTV traffic cameras on State Route 58. Um, They'll be by Broom, exit 142, 151, and 159. So Broom, Tehachapi, and Cameron Road. And those will be placed on the Quick Map app. And and you'll be able, if you're at Edwards and want to see current conditions, you'll be able to look at that on the Quick Map app. So that's something that we're excited to get that in. Once we get started, it's about a 20 working day construction project. Yeah, Christine uh, and I started talking, I don't know, a year and a half or maybe almost two years ago as a part of uh, developing a PIO network here in Eastern Kern and getting all of us together to share information. So this is kind of what we've kind of developed and worked on about sharing information and where we're evolving to utilizing our podcast to, you know, to let the public know that, Hey, you need to follow Caltrans. You need to follow the city of Tehachapi if you want this information, if you need it, because the demand is real time. Everyone's got to have it now. We can't wait till news at six. And if we get news at six, we might get 30 seconds of information on there. So, Mm -hmm. you know, this is really important that we stress 
we want you here in Tehachapi to follow Caltrans District 9 on their Twitter feed, also Facebook. Most importantly is get that Caltrans Quick Map mobile app because it is real time right out of dispatch. As it's happening, it's being updated. That is the first stop to get information about what the road conditions are. Key, oftentimes it's funny. As we go through a situation that's a longer situation, we do find that people reach out to us in Facebook and ask us questions real time during the the event. So once we start talking on Facebook, we continue talking on Facebook and Twitter. Quick map is right away, but it doesn't give you that, hey, what's going on now? What's happening now? Because we can, you know, if we're managing several situations, we just kind of run our, my team runs back and forth looking at, okay, who can we respond to? Who needs, who, who's asking us for real information right now? So we do as a team try and, um, and keep, stay on top of that. It's hard though, because you've got to mm-hmm. have someone dedicated to that right now. And then something changes all of a sudden, boom, you know, we've got a new impact condition that you've got to divert your attention to. So it's, it's really, right. really challenging to do that. I mm-hmm. wanted, to, I also wanted to ask you about adopt a highway. Adopt a Highway is a really cool program. We've got an award-winning section of the 202 that's handled by the Masonic Lodge here in Tehachapi for their dedicated efforts. Because I've talked to uh, some of the Jim Edwards, who's one of the the guys on that team, and he's super proud of the ribbon that gets displayed on their on their signage because of their dedicated effort. Do we have uh, availability sections here in in our area where more people can get involved in that program? I'm so glad you brought that up because yes, we definitely do. We have a lot of adoptions that have expired on State Route 202 and that, you know, I think it's from post mile zero at the, it starts at the prison and it goes up to 58. So it's about a 12 mile section. We do have section between nine, like I'd say 9.25 and 12.1. That's not adoptable just to let everybody know, because it's, it would be unsafe to have people in the public out there because of the width of the, of the highway there. And we want to keep our adopters safe. So we, have, we haven't had any new adopters in the area, but we have, we have several options for people to adopt. We, I think our, um, I want to give a shout out to Tehachapi Pest Control as well, because they're rocking it down there and they do a great job. What it is, because I don't know that everybody, and we also have a YouTube channel, Caltrans District 9, and we show little educational videos, and there's an Adopt a Highway piece on there where we have Jim from the Masonic Lodge on, actually, in our video. Everybody thinks it costs to get that sign on the side of the road for your business, but if you're going to commit to cleaning up that portion of the highway, whether it's a one-mile section or a two-mile section, that sign is free you know, we'll go ahead and put the sign up for you. It's free advertising and you just have to get out there and beautify your own city. You know, I know Bear Valley and Stallion Springs are, they're growing. There's like 9,000 people there and that state route 202, you know, the trash goes from them to the landfill on the other side of the valley, right? So a lot of loads aren't getting secured. We constantly have calls about it, but if we could get more help from local adopters, it would be great because our maintenance crews just can't handle that load as well as the state highway system issues. And how can people do that? Um, So you can, uh, Tom Scott is our district nine local coordinator. And if you just go on Caltrans district nine website and look up adopt a highway, um, you'll get his, his phone number, his contact information. And he would be happy to talk to you and get you all set up, get you the bags, the vests, the hats, and the litter picker uppers. <laughs> Excellent. So we'd well, love that help. So yeah. Thank you. And we've got some uh, a lot of great community support here. So I'm sure there'll be some people that hear this and, and we'll uh, take you guys up on that. Christine, is there Absolutely. anything that uh, else that maybe we didn't cover that you'd like to get information out on? You know, I think it's just um, just a big reminder to every to everybody during this winter season to just slow down, be careful, take care of yourselves, you know, put down your phones and just, um, you know, enjoy the weather, enjoy all that it brings us, but just keep everybody else safe on the roads. Perfect. We want to thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your time that you've shared and remind everyone to follow Caltrans at Caltrans9, both on Twitter, Facebook, get the Caltrans Quick Map app. Yeah. And uh, also uh, you can uh, check out quickmap.dot.ca.gov on the website to get real time information. And also 1 800. Thank you for having me.
and one eight hundred Gas Road. Before I forget, because I, I still use it. <laughs> Thank right. you so much for having me, gentlemen. It was a it was a, a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, Christine. You. Take it, care. Be safe. Well, that was Christine Nadler. She is the Chief Public Information Officer for Caltrans District Nine, our rep, and she's a partner in sharing information. And hopefully, those that are listening are going to follow directly from them and not just wait for us to share the information. Yeah. And, and you got to be careful too, even on the, on the Facebook side of things, you know, there's, there's the algorithm that is letting you know what goes on your newsfeed. So you may not see a Caltrans post of their Facebook page if you haven't really engaged with them a lot. So it, you might see it if key shares it on from the city's account, but just keep that in effect. I mean, unless you, you're going to every time go to your Facebook feed and go to most recent and that just, which you can do, but it's just a lot of extra steps. You're not going to always see that instantly on Facebook as you would expect. And and so just because of the way they, they display your, your feed these days. So yeah, the app and even something like Twitter is probably even a little more instantaneous than relying on the social media with the delays between either us sharing it or the algorithm that Facebook uses uses to display information. That's a good point. Yep. And we invite you to uh, send us your questions so that we can read them right here, mm-hmm. you know, on a, on a podcast edition. And if you've got an idea for us to uh, chase down and invite guests in to talk about a topic, we'd love to hear from you. And no question is too crazy. I mean, we get crazy questions all the time. I want to actually be able to share these and so we can answer them to a broader audience. You know what I'm saying? So we don't have to answer the crazy questions over, which we don't mind doing. We get you know, stuff all the time, but it'd be good to sometimes get some of these questions um, answered on the podcast. And then, and, and so uh, we can reach a multiple. Uh, if know, one people. person has a question, then yeah. there's a hundred more exactly. that have that same yeah. question. So we can uh, hopefully answer it. So send those questions to media at TehachapiCityHall.com. We'd love to hear from you. And also a reminder, the COVID-19 vaccinations, go to KernPublicHealth.com, COVID-19 vaccination locations, and it'll show you Mm -hmm. a map. You can find Adventist Health. They've got their own form that you can fill out, plus there's other sites and venues that you can go to. Yeah, and that's on our website too. And there's some stuff coming down from the state now in regards to that. So again, it's like everything that's been with COVID, it's completely fluid and changing. And so, I mean, it just, just stay tuned, but, uh, and and be patient because that stuff is, is evolving. Well, we appreciate your time and we'll catch you on our next episode of Tehachapod. Tehachapod is a conversation about Tehachapi designed for the people who live here or who would like to know more about this mountaintop community. If you have a question you would like answered, email media at tehachapicityhall.com. We will try to answer it on a future episode of Tehachapod. 